Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and I thought because of Valentine's Day we could do a little fun, just for fun, extra love reading. So we're going to do that. Please make sure that you uh, check out my meditation, the love meditation. Maybe even check that out before you watch this. It's going to be helpful and it's going to help you open up so that whatever comes up, you know how to take it. You're not misinterpreting the message that's coming through. Okay, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, just go to my website at angelsouls444.com. I have tons of content over at Gumroad. You've heard me talk about Gumroad. <laughs> it's gumroad.com slash angelsouls. And more specifically, I have a, an Archangel Shamuel video over there where I explain what Shamuel can help you with. She's known as the Archangel of Love. And it even includes a meditation to help you connect and understand where your love flow is, okay? So get on over there and check it out. So we're gonna leave it open here. You can choose group one, two, or three for your message. Just tune in for a moment. We'll put some timestamps below. You can choose all three. I like to do that with these types of readings. Sometimes I will feel like two is the strongest message, then a little of three, maybe a little of one, but it's mostly two and three and then one or you know, something along those lines. So have fun with it. Let's keep a light heart and let's get into it. All right, group one, let's see what your love message is. And we can treat these readings here uh, as timeless. So feel free to pop on back, you know, anytime and see if you are attracted to a different group of cards. All right, group one. What, ooh, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? We have soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Hang on a minute, okay? Because let's talk soulmates for just a moment. <laughs> soulmates bring sometimes, well, let's put it, I was gonna say they bring the problems, but that's not nice. Soulmates bring the lessons. They are the ones that will spark your awareness, get you to wake up, and to realize what still needs to be healed or what you need to understand about yourself. So often I see people go, oh yeah, this is my soulmate. And really they are in a codependent situation with somebody um, or you know that person has just convinced them that they're a soulmate. Now you might be like, Michelle, this is the worst love reading in life. It's not, trust me, just hang with me here, okay? Because if you understand this concept of what a soulmate is and someone's showing up, this could be someone that you're thinking about and they're a real pain in the behind. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a soulmate, okay? So let's get more of a story here. Don't panic, don't run away, it's fine. You deserve love. You are lovable. Listen, this is, I gotta hold this awkwardly because my table's too far away. <laughs> This is what this person is teaching you. Now, this person, this soulmate, so to speak, might be teaching you how worthy you are and helping you um, open your heart. And maybe it's a gorgeous flow and, you know, you're realizing how lovable you are. Or maybe the soulmate showing up and, like I said, being a real pain and maybe they're really diminishing and you suddenly spark out of it and go, uh-uh, I see the lesson that you're teaching me and that is that I am lovable and I deserve love, and I don't need to put up with this. There you go, <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we have a wedding. This situation involves marriage. So this could, for some of you out there, this could be that through line of like, okay, like some of you are watching this and going, I've got this person floating around, I kinda wanna explore it. Go ahead and explore it, that's fine. Yes, this could end up leading to um, a commitment. However, you know what I really felt when I pulled this out? It feels like someone is already married or maybe you're divorced and you're kind of wondering, am I ever going to get to that kind of love that I thought my marriage was? So if you're watching this and you are divorced, especially if you're recently divorced or, you know, for some of you, you've been divorced for a long time and you just haven't allowed yourself to get back into the game, so to speak. <laughs> this is definitely saying, you know, marriage, you don't have to worry about it right now. Okay. And please don't ever feel like a failure. Even if you've never been divorced, if you've had a breakup, most people have had breakups. Um, it does not mean that you can't keep working through that and learning through it and finding your heart to come into your heart. That is where you need to be. 
okay? But more than anything for a lot of you who are watching this, I feel like for some of you, the story is, is the person is married or you know what else? <sighs> Boy, you ready? you ready for this message? Some of you need to stop focusing on this. Yeah, the block to love for you is that you're more worried about being married than having love. And you're telling yourself a story that this person is your soulmate just so that you can get your story going. Getting to the marriage. The whole point here is that at any moment, you can draw in the partner who can help you feel loved and you love them and you can share these experiences. Of course, that's possible. But some of the story and some of the goals, <laughs> the life goals are completely holding you up. So don't do it to yourself anymore. Past life relationship, you have known each other before. So clear the karma. Some people get so excited when this card comes out and they're like, oh, that's so great. Why? Because like if someone from your past life, I don't really see it as past life because these are very dated cards that I'm using. This is just like a throwback thing. Um, you know, past life, that is a very linear way of looking at time. And the way I've always gotten the message is that there's no such thing as past. It's all happening at once. These are different timelines that are kind of looping around one another. And if you have someone from a past life coming back, it's because you didn't learn the lesson. Are you going to figure it out now? <laughs> You're going to figure out that you deserve love and you do not need to keep repeating the same old pattern. So this really, you know, the answer to this love message here, okay, if you have a question in your heart, is this the right person for me? Why do I feel like such a, a deep soul connection to them? Well, it could be that you've known each other before, definitely in another timeline, but you really have to stop and ask yourself, in my heart of hearts, does this person make me feel loved? Now, if you're somebody who's sitting there and you think that your happiness is your partner's responsibility, you better think again. What I'm getting at here is, is this person kind, has a good energy, sweet, you know, they're not there to make sure you're having a good day all the time, right? But can they show up and walk with me? Not ahead of me or behind me, but beside me. Do I feel loved? And do I feel my heart open up when I look at this person? Now, feeling the butterflies in your stomach, careful, okay, that's a gauge. That flutter is cute and nice and it could definitely lead to something really wonderful, but not always, not always. There's somebody that I get butterflies with, but that's because I'm intimidated by this person. <laughs> You know, and that's, and it's not an equal thing. This is somebody who, if I were to engage in a relationship with them, they would always have the upper hand. They would always see themselves as more powerful. I know this is hard for people to wrap their minds around. Again, you might say, this is the worst love reading ever. It's not though, if you can listen. And if you are still like, I don't want to hear this noise, go back to the beginning. Okay, go back. Don't leave yet because I got more cards coming. I don't know. We might turn this around. Come on, guys. All right. <laughs> no, there's, there's a lesson to be learned. If you chose this group one, it's not as cut and dry as, oh, I meet my soulmate. We get married. We get a dog. We have kids. You know, it's not, it's not like that. That's not what we're here for. We're here to connect and to love. And if you're not really in a situation where you can love, does that make sense? You're learning how to get to that place where you can have a free flow of love in an equal situation. Okay, so here is the back of the card if some of you like to see the artwork. And this says freedom. There is nothing stopping you. The path is clear if you want it to be. You're breaking, that was dramatic. I was like, mm, <laughs> you're breaking, <laughs> you're breaking some of your habits. So whatever comes up for you during, you know, this reading here, um, if you're in a bad situation, you're accountable for your decisions. Once you tap in and you understand what's right for you, you can be free. Um, some of you are in situations where you're not being good to the other person. Uh, cheating is not okay. And if you don't like that I said that, wait. You were warned. 
It's not okay to betray people. End of it. <laughs> it's just not. And if you need an open relationship, you work on that. But what this, I think, is talking about too is you're free to draw in an appropriate love partner if you're single. I know some of you guys who are in partnerships, you're like, well, what? <laughs> so, for, so if you're with a partner, um, you might want to discuss more freedom. You know, you might have a love partner who wants to come and do everything with you. And maybe you just want to go for a run in the morning by yourself to clear your head. You know, open the lines of communication and you can always work with Archangel Gabriel if you need some help, all right, in communicating your needs to your partner. But uh, if you're single, you have the freedom to be with somebody at any point that you want. It's just that you need to choose it. Okay. All right. So then we have, here's the back of this card. There's that one. And it says, beware of what you are projecting. Here we go. This is exactly what we're saying here. Beware of what you're, you are projecting for the qualities you admire in one another are qualities you both possess equally, equally. So <laughs> I like that word equally, equally. So the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. Remember the soulmate card? That's why they get here. <laughs> They're teaching you something. So try to tap in. The, the message is going to be in your heart space for you. Yes. So where are you not um, walking as an equal with somebody? Where does there need to be some bit of a shift? Or within you, if you are single and going, when am I ever going to meet somebody? Okay. You need to listen and pay attention to what is coming up for you at this time, what needs to be healed. You have freedom here. You do not need to keep hanging on to old stories. You do not need to keep holding on to old dynamics, you know, that sort of thing. All right, in your final card here, there is the artwork and it says, wait, ooh, exclamation point. <laughs> Don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course. Again, I think a lot of you are confronted with someone, if you want to call this a karmic relationship, uh, someone showing up to really be a reflection to you so that you can heal things within you and then create a good romantic situation for yourself where someone doesn't have more power than the other person. All right, so I hope that was helpful. We're leaving it there. Send you love. Bye. Hello, group two. Let's see what your love message is. And this applies whether you are single or with somebody. Don't matter. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's just see what you need to know now. And please remember that these are timeless. So I'm doing it now because of Valentine's Day. But anytime that you want to come back, even if you've seen it, um, see if you're attracted to a different number for a different message. But even if, and I say this about all my videos, if you go back and see any video, even from like, a long time ago, there could be something that was said in that video that you need to hear now. So always keep that in mind. All right. Also, please be aware that these cards are very dated. The language is very dated, spiritually speaking. So I'm just treating these as like a throwback deck. All right. All right. So let's see what we have for you. I have a giddy feeling for y'all. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you're not going to be going through your lessons when it comes to love or how you connect to somebody in a romantic partnership, yes? But there's joy here where there's the potential for joy. So even if your heart has been annihilated, it's a good day for you. It's a good day. Okay, let's get some cards. Engagement, before I read the card. That's funny that I was just saying that even if someone has just broken your heart or maybe you're in a partnership and you feel like your partner's just like not listening to like, hey, remember there's another person here? Hello. Um, <laughs> this is more about engaging with your feelings, engaging and being honest with where you are. Now, I said to group one, and I'll say it to you guys as well. It is not up to a love partner to be responsible for our happiness. Our happiness comes from us. And we don't want to pull on a relationship or put that kind of weight on a partnership or a potential partnership uh, because we're not creating our own light. So engage with your own heart. That way you understand yourself. That way you can set the boundaries. That way you can ask for what it is that you need and have open communication with a partner or a potential partner and have, 
you know, <laughs> have your ne- understand their needs and have your needs be met as well. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Now, for some of you, um, if if someone proposes to you, leave that down below so that we can all celebrate with you. This could be incredible. But if you're somebody like some of you might be watching, you're like I've been dating this person for like ten years and they've never brought out a ring and they've never. <laughs> You know, maybe marriage, is marriage comfortable for you? Is marriage comfortable for the other person? Whatever it is, you need to engage with the truth first. Yes. And and then see what else comes of that. Now, again, some of you might literally be getting engaged. So we'll see. Let your friends help you ask for and accept support from others. So this is a message for some of you out there to be careful gossiping about your relationship to your friends. Now, this is very controversial because people, uh, I like for example, I'm a very private person and I don't like walking into a room and people I barely know know more about what's going on in my relationship than I do. And yet we want our love partner to be getting support from their friends. But the thing is, is whether it's you or your partner or whatever, and we'll discuss the other layer of message here too. But you know, you can get support from your friends without revealing all the gritty details, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I mean, you can get someone's perspective without them, without sacrificing someone's privacy, yes? So be careful about how you are communicating with your friends. Now, for some of you out there, your friends are telling you what you need to hear, okay? Your friends might be saying, you, don't give yourself enough credit. You don't understand how beautiful you are. You don't understand what a wonderful person you are. Okay, so that person broke your heart. Do they get all of you, right? Or some of you might have friends who are like, you know, I know this person. I have this friend over here. Do you want to meet them? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you know, that could be that kind of thing too. But listen to what your friends are. If they're good friends, if they're good hearted people with a good energy, see what they're reflecting back to you. I'm not talking about sometimes those toxic people that end up in our lives and they're just always diminishing and trying to tear us down. That's a whole other thing. You might want to get away from that. Okay, is all I'm saying. All right. <laughs> Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Remember, as I said, we are responsible for our own happiness. We are responsible for our own joy. And if you pick this, this message might mean you know your heart needs a break or you know that you're having a good time growing and developing without someone else's energy or opinion coming in and affecting your growth, right? Eventually we have to learn from one another, so you'll get there. But if right now is just time as you kind of tune into this, you're like, I just need some space or I just need to figure things out for myself or what have you. Again, it feels very heavily like don't lean on your partner <laughs> for um, happiness. And if you're somebody who picked this because you just want love, you just feel like on your soul's contract, you're supposed to be with someone and where are they? I know the feeling, but sometimes... If you want the good stuff, you have to do the self-realization. You have to give yourself time and space to do that, all right? So make sure you're not showing up in a relationship, whether you have somebody or you're trying to draw somebody in. Don't ever show up in a relationship with half your energy, okay? Or being in a low frequency. Get yourself into your own happiness and loving yourself first. That way you can just show up and enjoy being with the other person without there being all this expectation to make me feel good about myself. Yeah? Okay. And then we have honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. <laughs> this feels like the honeymoon phase. Now you can have, some of you out there, you're watching a love reading, but you needed to hear like, hey, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to not just jump right in and start dating someone. So maybe you're almost having like a honeymoon period with your independence and with, um, <laughs> you know, recovering your own energy or what have you. Some of you are in a new dynamic where you're kind of in the honeymoon phase, or if you chose this and you are in an established partnership, you need to do this, okay? Even if it's at home, listen, we all had to be so <laughs> ingenious in 2020, right? To like learning how to stay home and make the best of things. Have a date night, get back into that honeymoon period. And this isn't so that you deny what you're feeling or what is needed 
to be seen within a dynamic or being honest with yourself if you're single, whatever your case is here. Um, it's not about sidestepping anything, but finding joy, finding joy within the partnership. Okay. Now, if you are somebody, I feel like some of you out there who are watching this portion of it, you might be in an unhealthy dynamic and you are kind of wondering like, is there anybody else out there for me? That's tricky when you're already in a dynamic and you're trying to get out and you're trying to line up your next thing, it's going to fail. Ah, uh, it's going to fail. Need it one more time. It's going to fail. Why? Because you haven't disconnected from that situation before you started another one. That's why when people cheat and they're overlapping, never goes well, never goes well. I'm just trying to warn y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's get you some more cards. Group two. Oh, this, I'm sorry, I didn't even shuffle. This just feels like it needs to come out. So right there is the artwork, if you can see that. And the back says, forgiveness. Stop focusing your energy on past events, for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. So it is, you know, giving yourself a little bit of space to heal, to let go of past situations, and to not, I mean, certainly not be defined by past situations, if that makes sense. So... It's funny that I was just saying, don't overlap, <laughs> don't overlap relationships. And then this comes out and you don't want your past dynamics in relationships. Or even some of you, you, you maybe, shoot, I feel like someone's like my age out there and you've never been in a real relationship. And even that is something to forgive because that could start having this, um, kind of being angry at life kind of thing. And maybe anger is kind of a harsh word, but always defining yourself as someone who's just going to always be single. Now, it could very well be that you, it's not in the cards for you, so to speak. Um, it, it might be that on your soul's contract, you're supposed to be doing things more independently and learning how to do that and to love yourself. But it could also be that you just have defined yourself as the single person and you're not allowing yourself to go beyond that self-definition, if that makes sense. All right, so the next card we have here, here is the artwork. And then we have, let there be closeness between you, but always give each other space. <gasps> give each other, when I need space, yep. Love never claims, it simply allows and gives. I'm telling you, if you're in this um, controlling dynamic, I need to know what you're doing. Let me check your cell phone. I need to... You are not in a relationship. I don't even know what that is. I, leave your comment down below on what kind of word we could use to describe that situation. Yikes, okay? <laughs> That's not love. That's not love. A true loving connection, there's trust, okay? And again, this goes to out to the single people out there too. If you feel like you need some space right now, I'm single, okay? And every time I've been about to get into a relationship, I felt like there was like, I feel like I'm going to do more growth on my own for now. And I've always been a late bloomer for everything. So I've, shoot, there's no time frame for me. I'm like, whatever, I'll show up in the relationship when it happens, right? Um, but I always needed that space to keep doing my self-healing, my self-discovery. Uh, and I didn't want to get pulled off course in a relationship. So I can offer that to you if you're a fellow single person, like you don't need to rush anything. It's all right. It's all right. And even so, especially um, for those of us out there who might have pressure to have children because you're getting older, if you don't hurry up, children, a little soul that is supposed to come to you, you don't have to rush a relationship and then rush into a marriage. And this goes out to people who are coupled, but you know, maybe this is some sort of dynamic in your relationship. You don't need to rush to hurry up and make a baby, okay? <laughs> don't do that, that's not fair to the child. Even if your body uh, physically, let's say you're uh, a woman and um, you are capable of having a child and yet you're getting older, you don't have to rush anything to give birth to that child. The soul will always find their way to you doesn't matter. You don't have to be the one who creates the vessel. Someone needs to hear that. You do not need to be the one who creates the vessel. It could be your niece or nephew. Uh, you know, it could be a friend's child. You could end up adopting. You just never know. Be more open. Be more open. These little souls, I'm telling you, as time goes on, these little souls are out there and they're finding their way in and they just need um, 
to pair up soul to soul. The story that goes around that, that needs to go. But, you know, it has to be done, you know, this way and only this way. You feel me? Okay. So, we have this card. Oh, this came up for group one. So here's the artwork. And then this says, freedom, there is nothing stopping you. The path is clear if you want it to be. So this is, you know, release the pressure from yourself, whatever your story is. Release the pressure, be in a space of joy and freedom, and allow things to come together in the way that they need to. Do not force anything. All right? So we're going to leave that portion there for you guys. Sending you so much love and take care. Hello, group three. Let's see what your message is here. As I've been telling everybody, this can be a timeless reading if you want to come back to this at another time and maybe you're attracted to a different group of numbers or a different combination of messages, something else coming out, feel free to do that. All right. Oh boy. Okay. So this isn't bad. I'm acting all dramatic and it's fine. Um, codependency, <laughs> addictions are affecting your romantic life. Usually people that are so concerned about, um, and this was always me for the longest time, for decades. Um, I was always attracted to love readings because I, I, it was almost like sitting at a window, right? And waiting for the universe to bring me something amazing. And what that did was it left me wide open. I wasn't taking control <laughs> of my own healing for one, but, um, and it left me wide open for people to come in and feed off of my energy, but I wasn't taking action to get my energy in a place where I could have a healthy partnership. I had to go through quite a bit to heal and, you know, and to disconnect from dark entities that want to diminish and say, oh, you're not in a relationship, there's something wrong with you. Um, there's nothing that could be further from the truth. If you choose to be single for right now, uh, th there's probably some really great healing that you're about to accomplish. So that's beautiful. Uh, but this says, be careful. Some of you who are just trying to draw on a love partner just to have somebody or uh, being addicted to someone's attention. I'm gonna share this story with you really quick. I had this situation that was very, very complicated and it involved someone who, um, you know, they just really kept trying to put their energy into me and it was frightening. And I didn't see, it was in a workplace. It was somebody who was above my position, had power over me the whole bit. And I spent a lot of time running away from this person because I just couldn't figure out what the heck this was all about. When I was getting ready to move away, uh, this person found out that I was moving away. And all of a sudden, one of my friends shows up and says, weirdest thing. Now he's after me. Now he wants me and da, 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 da. Yeah, this happened. This freaking happened. And I just looked at her. And honestly, I felt really bad for her because she was so addicted because this says addictions are affecting your love life. Uh, she was so hungry for someone's attention, especially this someone that even though she was about to get targeted for something that's not very good energy, she was excited for the attention. We all need to pump the brakes here when someone shows up in our life and we're excited about it. We, we just want to get in there because here's our chance to have a connection with somebody. But is it pure? Is it pure and is it real? Or is it someone, you know, codependency, um, I'm not a psychologist, but there can be a real dynamic there between narcissists and codependents. So check with an expert to see if you need to work through some issues around that. But, you know, don't get addicted to someone's attention because it will blind you from what's really there. And I've done personal readings for people where I'm like, hey, don't go down that road. I'm telling you this, this I don't feel like this person has very good intentions for you. And because they were so hungry for the attention and to feel loved, it's fine. That's a basic human need is to feel loved, right? But they, they wanted to look past all the toxicity and therefore invited it into their lives. That's how people get to a place in their life and they're like, how did I end up here? You know, so just be careful. Okay, so the next card here is, this could be the one, you've already met the romantic partner you seek. Careful with this, careful. This kind. This is a very dated deck. We have evolved, we have ascended since this came out, and um, we're not in this space of desperation 
anymore. You've already met the partner you seek. Um, I think that's more of a message of set your standards higher because right now you're in a pattern. You're in a pattern. And so in a conditioned, yes, they're saying a conditioned pattern to expect someone who's super romantic and super this and super that. Well, maybe your ideal love partner that you could really spend the rest of your life with is someone who has a different kind of love language, <laughs> right? Uh, maybe they don't express it in the way that you think they should, but you know they have their own way of being. Uh, so if you want, if you're single and you're watching this, or maybe, maybe this could be the one and you're with your little partner and you just snuggled up with your partner a little bit more, that's beautiful and that's awesome. But um, I, I, I'm hung up on this other message here of you've already met the partner you seek if that's what you want to settle for. So what do you want? You need to get clear on that. Okay. Now I know I'm going to get all the, because I know the types of people that get attracted to love readings. They're going to be like, this is so horrible. You're such a downer. That's okay, honey, because I just told you something that could absolutely free you. You either listen or you don't. Okay. <laughs> My life is going to keep moving. You do what you got to do. All right. So here's the next card. Keep an open mind. Yes. So this says, I dropped the card. Jeez, I got too excited. Um, <laughs> keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. We were just saying that. Okay, you have to be more open-minded and give people room to show you uh, how they want to express love to you. So the message thus far is to get clear within yourself about what kind of partnership you want. And this is not that old fashioned way of manifesting that we were always told about where you sit down, I want someone with blue eyes and black hair and bip you know, really, really, you know, there, you know how many people out there could fit the description of what you think they should look like and they're going to show up and they're going to be an Okay, is that what you want? No? Okay. Let's go back to the drawing board here and get someone who <laughs> may not be your usual quote unquote type, um, but who can really love you on a very, very deep level. And working towards having a connection with someone where you feel completely seen and not have to feel ashamed of what they're seeing. And they love you all the more for who you are authentically work on that. Uh-huh. All right. So then we have playfulness. You should be able to be playful with your partner. Yes. So if you're in a dynamic right now where things are a little heavy and you're kind of like, oh, I don't know about all this. See if you can uh, cap recapture that sort of childlike joy for yourself and um, invite your partner into that. Okay. Uh, this says to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. If you're looking for love, Get out there and do things that make you feel joyful and playful, okay? And this will help you find whoever would be the right partner for you. But I feel like it's more about upliftment. You know what I mean? Like when we <laughs> taking life so seriously and it's super heavy, you know. Anyway, let's, that's going to help um, attract in a love partner if you are in a joyful place. Okay, so let's get you a few more cards here. Here we go, here we go, guys. <laughs> here it is. So here is the artwork. And then it says, it is important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone. Instead of placing your focus on another, now is the time to give to yourself. Don't wanna be codependent. You don't wanna be codependent. You're gonna to have to work on why you need to be defined by someone else. Um, as somebody who struggled with codependency issues, I went through plenty of narcissistically abusive relationships and they were so bad, some of them, that when the breakup occurred, I didn't have any sense of self. I didn't know who I was um, because a long time ago I was conditioned to think that I was worthless and that um, my worth came from being useful to someone, um, whether that was just blindly backing them up on anything or being for them at the expense of my own sanity, right? <laughs> whatever it is, you know, I really took a long time to come on out of that. And, um, I want to offer that to you as well. So it does say, take a step back and spend some time alone for self care and self love. So, you know, some of you are watching this and you just got into a fight with someone with maybe your love partner 
it's showing you something and this is your opportunity right here right now to step back and you know to figure some stuff out okay to figure out who you are you can't just go blaming your partner even if you have like an awful love partner you've had an awful history with love partners you know the reason why i offered that example was because for years and years it was very easy and you know no one could really argue i could point that person and say they were abusive they were awful but the thing the universe was trying to show me to get me going in the direction of a healthy love partnership was why did i think i deserved that why did i keep going into dynamics like that why did I have to feel so afraid when I was trying to remove myself from those situations? Because it was dangerous. It was dangerous for me to get out of those situations. So again, that might seem a little heavy, but someone out there needs to hear that. Get empowered, okay? It's not about fighting or being right. It's about loving yourself and stepping back and giving yourself what you need and giving a partner space for what they need. Or if you're single, realizing this is what I'm worth and I'm not gonna settle for anything less than, okay? So then we have this card. There is the artwork. And this says balance. Balance. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. Remember, um, we, we learn through reflecting <laughs> with one another. Uh, there have been dynamics where I realized that I could be a little rigid. I could be rigid because, man, I my home has to be. I'm very rigid about no electronics in the bedroom, okay? No, I don't care if you're somebody who wants to watch TV before you go to sleep. I think that that is very distracting and bad for sleep. I put my foot down, I said, no, They're like you can't have that in here. <laughs> and sometimes you gotta compromise. I mean, I, honest to God, I'm still in that space. You ain't bringing no stinking TV into my bedroom, you just not. But, um, <laughs> but whatever your circumstances are, you know, where is it that you have so many expectations on someone else? And what is that about? Oh, here, you want to see this side? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like showing you this. Um, you know, where can you be more balanced within yourself? That way you're attracting in a healthy love partnership. Or if you're already in a partnership, where can the two of you balance a little bit more between your wants and needs? Okay. And here we go. Here is this one. And this says romance. Cupid's arrow strikes. Well, look at that. You can have this gorgeous outcome by listening to all these messages that just came up to help you free yourself energetically. And this helps you open up to a greater love flow. And it, it doesn't come with all of this crazy sacrifice and you have to be someone different or you're trying to force someone else to be different, to be more in alignment with who you think they should be. That's not correct, okay? No, they will be who they are. And <laughs> you can choose to show up in that dynamic or not. Uh, but if you get to that healthy place, let the romance flow. All right. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.